hi there. So, um, before I talk about the cerebellum, which is the concentration of, of the topic, because um, my aim is to be a good therapist, um, a good educator in the long run, and a good um, writer. So, I want to focus on um, like putting them in simplified form. So, I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, cerebral cortex first before the cerebellum okay so for the cerebral cortex we all know that's the highest uh, point of the brain it's just like the and if you were to think about Angela, he you know he's the boss of all right and before you can even like talk to the boss you know there's like um, different uh, routes that you have must take and these are called like the tracks and all that okay so from the cerebral cortex going to the cerebellum you know um, what you know there's different areas so it's really complicated so I have to um, do a video like one by one sectional so for the cerebral cortex um, you know it's the highest so it will you will um, give some uh, information it will command uh, it will give some command to the cerebellum and this the cerebellum is the one that coordinates all these movements all these you know so if there's a problem with any for say uh, Parkinson's, right? Because that's a coordinated uh, movement. Usually, um, it's uh, it's at the basal ganglia, um, but it's a cerebral cortex um, um, issue. Um, you know, because of the L L do the dopamine, um, it's not uh, uh, releasing. Uh, the body's not releasing it, and what's happening there is um, um, the person will need to have some L-dopa because our body doesn't really, um, you know, so it has, to, you have to do the transition from dopamine to L-dopa, okay? And then, um, I'm on video, close the door. And also that um, I, I wanted to also, sorry, my, my, um, chain of thoughts um left so let me just check on my notes okay so with regards to um you know the composition of um you know the brain i'm not going to go into the anatomy i'm not well equipped and i don't have the figure so what i'm trying to do here is for you guys to recall what's the main function how um giving you in you know to have your own vision of how this work but uh for a fact that before uh, you'll be able to uh, understand uh, all these facts that I'm saying is you will have a background of anatomy and where all the body or all the areas I'm, I'm talking about is the specific areas um, and I assume that where you are watching this for this purpose of learning about uh, uh, physiology in a layman's terms okay so going through my notes here okay so um I have mentioned, um, I made a video, a short video of, about the meninges. Um, uh, we all know that the brain has ventricles and um, just like the heart, uh, it has ventricles as well. And, um, and it has uh, like a sinus, it has all these um, plexus, and it also have like a vein where at the very superior top, where that cerebral um, spinal fluid Usually, um, you know, it's produced at the coronoid, uh, uh, coronoid uh, complex, and then it will um, circulate around the, the brain, and then it will go down to where the uh, sub subarachnoid space is. Okay, so we all I'll talk about that, um, and I wanted to also mention a few pathologies that could um, uh, happen when the um, cerebral cortex is uh, affected or if there's any lesions or if there's any um, concussions that happen um, like I said um, just like the knee I did a video um, of the cerebral spinal fluid just like our knee it has synovial uh, fluid right what's its uh, purpose is to uh, uh, promote uh, some cushion and some um, there's that fluid that's 
uh, serving as protection uh, in our brain. In the in the in this manner is the cerebral spinal fluid or CSF, right? Just like the synaptic fluid, its main purpose is to protect. So if we're to um, let's say I mentioned earlier, if you're going on a cruise, you're always in this um, uh, how do you call it? Um, uh, equilibrium. You're not really in, in a balanced state, right? So um, your brain, you know, if there's no fluid, like it could. I know we have meninges, and I talk about that, but it could um, without the fluid, it could, you know, uh, have some serious damage, right? Because the the brain, as we all know, doesn't have any pain um, receptors, okay? So things could be happening there. We don't know um, that, um, you know, it's already, there's already damage. So with, with that help of that uh, CSF, um, it makes um, the cushioning and protection more um, durable, okay? Okay, so, um, so my notes here. Okay, so um, I am going to be um, talking about a little bit about of the, um, the uh, this pathology is called cretinism. Um, what's happening is because um, there's that uh, damage. It's separate from the cerebral palsy. I I already made a video of the cerebral palsy, but I'm gonna patch it up a little bit. For cretinism, is more of a re retardation of the body and also the brain. So it's mental and uh, physical re retardation. So the person looks really um, creepy, like very um, different because the growth, the, you know, the, the growth didn't happen. And then their mental, it shows in their physical uh, being as well. But if you uh, Google, um, you mentioned cretinism, okay? Also cerebral palsy, I made a video about that, um, and what's happening is that um, during the birth process, right? You know, during back in the old time, they used to use the forcep, and it affected the cerebral cortex. And um, and what's happening is that the cerebral tract for the from the cortex to the cerebellum, so there's that um, you know um, variance, right? So uh, you know. For that it has some either it has some facility on you know on the lower uh, limb right in the instance of uh, the cerebral palsy or the Parkinson's um, they have that rigidity right and and they have that um, that tremors that's also happening um, with this type of um, uh, let's say injury see uh, also a CVA which is the uh, car accident, right? So what's happening for a cerebral, sorry, vehicle accident, right? Um, what's happening is when the heart lose um, oxygen or, or it's in, in the brain because there's two arteries that's actually um, bringing oxygen to our brain, right? So it's the um, carotid arteries and, and uh, vitreous arteries, right? So if those are blocked in some ways, there's some uh, accident that occur or some, I don't know, some, um, you, some, I don't know, fat that's happening or some, we, I don't want to go into details of that, but I did a video of that uh, already. So if, let's say there's a blockage, so the oxygen, it didn't reach the, so that will uh, cause some uh, stroke. And then instead of the heart, uh, you know, we'll have some heart um, ischemia, because if we lack um, oxygen, skin will attack. A skin um, ischemic attack uh, will usually happen. And um, with also, I, I hope that we can differentiate like the angina pectoral, pectoris. Um, what's happening is they have this uh, pain in their left shoulder usually, but it's not really the left shoulder, right? So be aware that if we're feeling that. Um, we have to get checked because it could be the heart, left shoulder, could be indication that you're having some um, issue with your angina or pectoral. Okay, um, so I'm gonna do a little. I'm just checking here with regards to 
um, like I said, I'm doing sectional or, um, okay, so, sorry, the name of that uh, superior um, sag, right, uh, which is the vein or, um, or the CSF, where it goes into the, just like our body, we have veins, right? And what happens is it drains back to the blood uh, stream, right? So, um, so it's, it's produced in the choroid plexus or chambers or the lateral, the vent, the ventricle. Like I said, we have ventricles, right? The lateral ventricle. So it will, it's uh, produced there and then it will circulate over, um, over, all over the, even the, the meninges going through the subarachnoid uh, space and all through um, the ventricles of the brain. Okay. This is an old, old nose. Um, also, one more. Um, uh, the encephalitis, right? Um, that's also um, connected to where the cerebral cortex um, issue or um, disorder or if there's something going on with the cerebral cortex. Okay, so that's one thing that we also uh, need to uh, look at. Like I said, if if it says encephalitis or meningitis, that's a general term. That doesn't indicate uh, which area, and also um, it has to have um, another name prior to the meningitis word uh, to indicate uh, whether it's a virus or it's a bacteria. Usually, if it's in children, it's usually bacteria meningitis, uh, which is more um, you know kind of dangerous. Oh, it's happening now with COVID, you know, um, I, that's also a factor. But fungi, um, meningitis is very rare. Okay, so um, I believe that I am going to go ahead, talk about the sensory neurons now, and, and, and another video for my uh, favorite book, um, The Handbook of Life.